Hello, Kaylee here again. Hopefully you just got done watching a couple short videos on truth tables. Hopefully you've got a somewhat of a foundation there of what a truth table is and how you would go about building a truth table to get to the big truth table that we're going to develop that I introduced at the very first video that I showed you guys, that big long compound proposition, we need a couple more connectives. So far, you should have a handle on and, inclusive or, exclusive or, negation, I think that's it, those four. Now we're going to introduce this implication, uh, if-then statement, okay, the logical implication. And remember, this is a, a special type of implication. Sometimes it doesn't always translate well to the if-then statements you would see in everyday language. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. This is a logical symbol, and it has specific connotations here. So as far as notation goes, we've got a proposition P, a proposition Q. We could have two compound propositions and join them with an implication, um, but in this case we just have these singular atomic propositions joined by an implication. So this would read, if P, then Q. And we're going to talk later on in the next video about some different ways of reading this implication. So this, this symbol here, this arrow, sometimes is written with a double arrow, but it means the same thing. Okay. Um, to, uh, this implication, the truth table, took me some time to believe. At first, I just took it for granted, took the definition, and, and went with it. But I think it's really nice to try to get an understanding of why these truth values are the way that they are for me, um, so I hope to share that with you. So when I was reading this book, The Math Gene, I came across this activity that really helped me understand the implication truth table. And so he references two different puzzles, and we're going to talk about one of them here, and then you're going to talk about the other one in your homework. So the first one that we're going to talk about here is one that's more relatable. It's one that we can understand, we can envision ourselves in this situation, and so it's easier to draw these conclusions. The puzzle that he based it off of was um, some psychological test done, um, I think by a guy named Wilson. But if you want more information about, about those two things, and you can read the book. Otherwise, we'll present them here and in your homework. So if you want to check out the book, there's the information. Uh, this guy, Keith Devlin, is a professor at Stanford. He, he does a really interesting Introduction to Mathematical Thinking course on Coursera. So that would be worth your time to check out, um, and just Coursera in general if you don't know about it. It's a really cool open access course site. And Keith Devlin also does these little NPR segments on math, so it's kind of fun to watch those too. So let's go ahead and get this little puzzle started here and try to wrap our heads around it. So the idea is you're having a party and you're in charge, okay? So suppose you're in some college town and so you've got all ranges of ages. You've got freshmen up to grad students, non-traditional students, so the ages vary. And it's really hard to tell who's what age. So you're going around, you've got a big party, so you want to be really efficient in your checking of the rules. You want to make sure no laws are broken. You're in the states, so the legal drinking age is 18. And so you come upon this one table. And we've got four people on this table. And one person's got a beer, one has a Coke. And a couple people have some mysterious uh, clear liquid. So what we need to figure out is what IDs I need to check, what drinks do I need to check. I think that this picture aligns. Um, I'm going to take four of you, and, and you're going to come to my party. You're going to sit at this four-person table. Usually on campus, I try to get four people to come up with me. But uh, since this is an online, I'm just going to use your names, no pictures. Hopefully it's OK here. So, so four people are going to come to my party. I've got Courtney, who's drinking a beer, but her ID is facing down, so we don't know how old she is. We've got Adam, who his ID is facing up. But he's drinking this clear liquid, maybe vodka tonic, maybe gin, gin, uh, gin tonic, uh, vodka sour. What else could this be? Or just maybe it's water. Maybe it's Sprite. Maybe it's uh, some sparkling water. 
And Sarah's drinking this nice sealed Coke, definitely no alcohol in there, and but her ID is facing down. So your first little tidbit quiz here is going to be determining which IDs and which drinks you need to check. So you're going to check to see if the drink contains alcohol. And again, for sure, Courtney's contains alcohol. It's a beer. Um, Adam and Darren's we're not sure about. Sarah's definitely non-alcoholic. And then whose IDs do we need to check? We need to check Sarah's ID, Courtney's ID, Adam's, Darren's. Okay, so um, go ahead and answer that question on D2L about whose drink, whose ID we need to check. And we want to be super efficient here and do the minimum amount of work. Okay, um, we don't want to check more drinks and more IDs than necessary. So take a moment and, and answer that question on D2L. Okay, and the other thing I want to think about here is what, if you could formulate the situation into an if-then statement, how would it look? What would our hypothesis be and what would our conclusion be? Would it be if the guest is of legal age, then they are drinking? Or would it be if they are drinking an alcoholic beverage, then the guest must be of legal age? Which one of those makes more sense? And try to take your mind out of all this mathematical logic. Just think about which one sounds um, makes more sense here. Which one sounds more, I don't want to say logical, but logical to you. Because in this situation, it, it does work out that way. So. All right, so hopefully you believe that the conditional that would make sense in this situation is if your guest is drinking an alcoholic beverage, then they must be above the legal age. And keep in mind here, in this particular situation, we've got a connection between my if-then. We've got a connection between my hypothesis and my conclusion. And we're going to see later on in the next video that there's, that's not always the case. Sometimes there's no connection. So what we're going to do is think about this if-then statement and try to build up the truth table for the conditional. Again, the truth table for a conditional can be uh, sometimes doesn't, doesn't really make sense when you first read it. But I think if you think about this example, it really does help. So when you're thinking through this example, when you read the whole statement together and you think about, okay, what happens if the hypothesis is true but the conclusion is false, or vice versa, or true, true, false, false, I want to think if, if the whole statement reads good, like it's an okay situation, then think, you know, that implication is true. Okay? If you read it and it says that's bad, think about like false. So. What you're going to do now is there's a quiz on D2L to complete this truth table for the implication. So you get two attempts on this. Um, on your first one, go ahead and just give it a stab. Think about this situation. Don't do anything, don't do any research, really just try to give it, give it your best go. So you think, okay, the guest is drinking alcohol, then guest must be above legal age. Good or bad, right or wrong. Guest drinking alcoholic beverage then not above legal age, good or bad. Not drinking alcoholic beverage, above legal age, good or bad, okay or not. Not drinking alcoholic beverage, not above legal age, okay or not. So hopefully you can fill in these four truth values here for P implies Q. Okay, so work on that. And then think about the situation here, okay? Whose IDs, whose drinks are you going to check? That might help you understand those truth values. All right, so, so in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, biconditional, and we're going to talk more about implication and different ways of reading it and little interesting tidbits about, about that implication. Okay. I will see you soon.